welcome to the ActionScript 3.0 Flash Sound Programming Video Textbook, in which we are teaching sound programming in Flash from head to toe. In the first lesson, we showed how to get sounds placed manually in your timeline for a simple thing like applying button sounds or applying a sound to follow along with an animation that you create. In this second lesson, we will demonstrate the two ways in which a Flash programmer can ready a sound for ActionScript 3 control, which is handling the sounds through code. And that is how we get access to volume control, visualization rendering, track seeking, sound panning, and much more. Okay, let's create a new Flash ActionScript 3 file. And so the point of this lesson is to show you the two ways in which you can ready a sound for full-on ActionScript 3 control. So I'm going to save this file to a specific location on my computer. On my desktop, I have this folder called Example. Inside that folder called Example, I have another folder called mp3 files. So along with that mp3 files folder, in the example folder on my desktop, I'm going to place this file. I'm going to call it sound example one Save. Okay, so the first way to load a sound into Flash and get it ready for full-on ActionScript 3 control is to use a sound object. So what we'll do is type in var, we'll call it snd colon sound equals new sound object. And the next thing we need is the URL request to grab the mp3 out of that folder that I have sitting there called mp3 files. So let's type in var req colon url request equals new url request and then in between parentheses we put a set of double quotes and then we put the path mp3 files that was my folder name forward slash cowboysfromhell.mp3 and make sure you put a semicolon on the end. Now we're going to load that URL request into our sound object so we type in snd dot load in between parentheses here we're going to type in req which is our URL request. So at this point your sound is loaded into Flash and ready to go. So all you have to do is command it to play so you say snd dot play open close parentheses semicolon now let's press control enter and let's see if we have a sound play yes indeed okay so that's the first method to get a sound ready for full-on action script 3 control okay now let's remove all that code and we'll show you the second method press control enter you'll see nothing plays it's all empty now the second method I'm going to show you is for people who might not have the privilege of streaming the URL externally, like streaming the mp3 file externally from the URL request, which is the preferred method if you're building something like mp3 players, or even if you have mp3 song playing on your website without an mp3 player, you still might want to stream it from the server. So using the URL request method in the sound object is the way to do that. But some people might not have access to streaming from the server, they might have to put the file directly in the library. So let's take that same song, file, import into library, go to mp3 files, import Cowboys from Hell. Now once it's in the library, I'm going to open my library and right click on it. Way at the bottom it says properties, click on that. Then here where it says export for action script, click that. And then right here where it says class, name that whatever you want. I'm going to name it my track. OK. And then it's going to give you a dialog that says the definition for this class could not be found, so it'll be created automatically. OK. Now in the code, you can just type in var snd colon my track is equal to new my track. Open close parentheses semicolon. Next line snd dot play. Pretty much the same thing we did before, but now we're using a library sound file, which can be full MP3, whatever you want. So let's press control enter. There you go. Now you can control this using the sound object, sound channel, or whatever you want to do. So you can put visualizations on this sound playing, control the volume, panning, everything you want to do, even with the sound channel and everything, from a an MP3 file that's in your library. And I just wanted to throw this method out there in case somebody doesn't have the privilege of streaming using the URL request, which again I will say is the preferred method for dealing with sound. So let's say you have that song playing and maybe you have all these frames out here in your flash file and at 150 you have a stop command and maybe at frame 80 
you want to stop that sound from playing. So right now if I press control enter the song will just keep going and going until the end of the song. To stop any sounds that are playing in your file you can type this in soundmixer.stop all wherever you want any part of your timeline any part of your code. Now watch what happens. See? It just shut right off. So you can use soundmixer.stopall to stop all sounds that are currently playing in your file. I just wanted to throw that in there. We're not going to really be using that method very much because we're going to be programming buttons like play and stop buttons and things like that. Because normally when you're dealing with sound, you're, you know, you're building an MP3 player or you're having sound play on your website, in which case you want to give people pause buttons or stop and play buttons and things like that. All right, so that lesson shows you the two methods you can use to ready a sound for full-on ActionScript control.